Oh, that's horrible. In this video, we're going to be fixing this rust. So if you have a vehicle that's over 10 years old and you live in an area where they use a lot of salt on the roads, like here in New England, you're probably going to end up with rust like this. And there's not much you can do other than just break it up. This panel, this whole panel has to be replaced. You can't just patch this up a little bit. Now while we're replacing this panel, I'm going to have the doors off and this running board out of the way. This panel right here is rotted pretty bad too, so we're going to replace that also. First thing I'm going to do is remove these running boards. I'm going to do that by removing some bolts on the back side. Now we remove the running boards so those are out of the way. The next step, I need to remove the door. So I'm going to start by disconnecting the electrical connectors and then get the hinges off and then do the same for the front door. Now we got those doors off. Now I'm gonna take this panel off. I'm just gonna use the trim tool and pop it out. There we go. Now I have to get the weather stripping out of the way. I'm gonna take this trim piece off, pull that up, do that on the front as well. Now before I cut back any of this metal, what I'm going to do is just take my new panel and just hold it up to where it's going to go. And I can just take a marker. Now it's not going to be perfect, but you can at least get an idea. And just trace it. And if you only had rust on the back side, you could cut this panel in half and just do the back or just do the front. To start, I am going to cut back a little bit further from the line. I don't want to cut right up to the line in case I cut too much off. You can always trim it back a little bit more, so we'll do that now. So if you're using a cutoff wheel or a grinder, you want to keep in mind where the sparks are going. You don't want them getting into the carpet, potentially catching the carpet on fire. Now they make special spot weld drill bits that you can put on the end of your drill and it kind of just, it's kind of like a hole saw, it just cuts around the uh, spot weld and then you can pry this off. If you don't have one of those though, what you can do is take a smaller drill bit, just drill right in the center there a little bit. And then once you get it started, you don't have to go all the way through. It's ideal if you don't go all the way through. Then take a bigger drill bit and just drill right there until it looks like this. And as you're doing this, have your chisel and just hammer it and you should be able to break it. And you have to do this to all of these on both sides. Uh, it's a lot of work. It's a little bit tedious, but it's not too bad. Grab the panel and just slide it out. 
Just bend it down. Just like that. And it's still attached down below. This is pretty rusty down here. Now if this panel underneath here was in better condition, um, you would have to do the same to those spot welds underneath there, drill them out and just pry them down. Because it's in such poor condition, I'm just gonna use a air chisel and chisel it off. So I got the old one trimmed out and I'll just slide the new panel in place and it fits pretty good. But before I make my lines to trim it out a little more accurately, in the front it doesn't fit here too well. So I'm just going to trim this back a little bit, get this to line up good and then I can make those lines. All right, so I trimmed up some of the underneath here and grinded it down a little bit. There is a little bit of rust right there. I will have to uh, treat that rust a little bit before I weld this up. But at this point, I just wanna line this up again. Just get an idea of how it looks. And it looks good underneath. Now I am gonna just trim this front part first, get this to line up, and then once that's lined up and looks good, we'll start trimming the rest of it. All right, so I cut this side out right here. That lines up really good. Just like that. I might have to adjust it a little bit, but Overall, it uh, looks really good right there. Now I can continue on the other parts and do the same. All right, so that's all trimmed up. All the areas trimmed, it looks pretty good. Just like that. Now we can start prepping this panel and this area so that we can weld it on. So where these spot welds were, if there's anything that's raised up, you just want to <coughs> trim it down. Make sure it looks good. And then same with underneath here. There is some rust here. If you want, you can sandblast that or use, use the grinder. Um, and then underneath here as well. Clean that all up. All right, in these areas, I'm just gonna take some acetone cleaner and a rag and just wipe it down. All right, now any bare metal, you want to take some primer. Just give it a couple coats. And then right here, do the same. Now that primer's dry, I'm just gonna take a little bit of spray paint. It doesn't necessarily have to be the exact same color as the car. This is just gonna prevent the rust and just spray it on. And you could give it a couple coats. Now the reason why I use spray paint and not rubberized undercoating, a lot of times rubberized undercoating is flammable and when we weld, you could potentially have a fire in there and not even notice. Now we're gonna start prepping the panel 
any of the areas where we're gonna weld, I'm gonna use a grinder and just grind the surface. Now that we have those areas cleaned up, I'm gonna drill some spot welds holes. I'm gonna take a smaller drill bit and just go along right here. Just put a piece of wood underneath there. And I'll drill them a little bit bigger after. And then go about two inches apart or an inch and a half. They don't have to be in the exact spots where they were originally. And then we're gonna do the same on the bottom right here. So I have all those holes started. And now I'm just gonna go back with the drill bit with a 5 16 drill bit and just make those holes bigger. Now if you have a specific spot welder, you wouldn't have to do this step, but we don't. We're just gonna use a MIG welder. Start those. So I have all this area cleaned up with the grinder. Now near each hole, I actually have to clean up. I don't have to clean this whole thing up, but um, I could just do at each individual hole. Just like that. And I'll just do all those on both sides. And now the body's all set. This is all cleaned up, this area. I did end up grinding this area down, even though we just painted it. Um, I didn't really need to paint that at the time. So that's cleaned up because the spot welds, we're gonna weld right to there. Just get it lined up. And I'm gonna take some locking pliers. Just get that locked on right there. There, looks good. All right, so this looks pretty good. This is lined up. My gaps look pretty good over there. And you're gonna wanna clamp from underneath as well. Now I'm gonna go around and fill these spot welds. I did protect the carpet with a welding apron and a damp towel and I'm gonna do some tack welds in this area. Um, I'm not gonna put a straight bead because you could potentially warp the metal. I will just do small tack welds a little at a time and just go back and forth. And I'm gonna move the locking pliers to each tack weld as I do it. All right, all right, so that looks pretty good. I am gonna fill this in a little bit more, but before I do that, I'm gonna do the same thing with the spot welds to the bottom. Just clamp these down and just go in between each one, one at a time. 
So this came out pretty good. I happen to be using a flux core welder. That's why you see all this mess. I can just take a wire brush, just clean this up a bit. And then if I have to, I can go back. If you see any holes um, that you don't want to leave, um, you can go back and fill in some of those holes. Do it a little bit better. So I'll clean this all up and then I will take a grinder and just lightly grind it down a little bit. We're going to use a little body filler in this area, in this area, and the area where the spot welds are. If you find you have to go back and uh, re-weld it a little bit, that's okay. Those look pretty good though. Now I don't want to grind it down too much. What you can do is just take a body hammer hammer it down a little bit. So I got this all grinded down good, and that looks good right there, and where the spot welds are, those are all good. Uh, I'm not gonna put any body filler on here yet because we have to replace this panel. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here as what we did here. Just slide this in position, and just make a mark. And then I'll just cut a little bit below this, and then same with the little spot welds. I'm just going to have to take the drill and drill those out on here and then on the back side as well.
I couldn't access these spot welds down below, so I pulled the tire off to just gain access. And now I can drill these out. Now those are all drilled out, now I'm going to take a screwdriver or a pry bar and try to pry this panel out. I'm going to take my panel with that off and just line it back up, just see how it's supposed to fit. It looks pretty good. Okay, so I can trim this back a little bit more. It's better to keep trimming than to trim too much off. So, so I'll just trim up to that line and check and see how that looks. There's this foam insulation right here. I'm gonna take this off. It's probably not flammable, but just in case it is, when I'm welding, I don't wanna create a fire. So I'm just gonna pull this off, get it out of the way. Most likely it's just for sound deadening. So I'll just take some of that out of the way as well. So this panel fits pretty good right here. So now I'm just gonna prep the surfaces and get ready to install it. All right, now I'm gonna line this up and map out where I wanna drill the holes. And I just need to remember that area and that area. I don't have to drill anything. So I can drill one about every two inches. And then same as the other panel, you just drill these holes. I'll start with a smaller drill bit first. Now I'm going to use the grinder and clean up all around all these holes and this area we're going to weld to the body. Now I'll take the panel and line this up. And that looks good. And take some locking pliers. And a good area on the side. And lock it into place. Might have to adjust it a little bit. I'm going to start by tack welding the top part. Make sure that's um, in there good. And then I'm going to have to readjust the sides.
I'm gonna clean up this weld with the grinder. I'm not gonna grind it down too much. Just take a hammer and tap it down a little bit. Stuff if you uh, wanna get that pretty even. And then I can go back with the welder and see if there's any spots that I missed, if there's a major gap. So I grinded down the welds and they look pretty good. What I want to do is just take a straight edge or a ruler and just make sure the welds are not touching any part of the ruler. Make sure there's a gap there. I'm going to use some body filler and that looks pretty good. But if the welds touched the ruler, um, you're not going to be able to grind that down more once you have body filler on there. So what you can do is just take your hammer, like I said before, just tap it down. I'm just going to use a little uh, cleaner or some acetone and a rag. Just wipe this down in any area you're going to put body filler. It's good. We'll do the same for the rest of it. Now I'm going to mix some of the fiberglass body filler. What I want to do is take a piece of cardboard and some plastic, just tape it to the cardboard just so you have a nice area to work. Take some of the body filler, you're going to mix that up. And I'll just put some right here. And you don't want to mix too much. That should be about good. About a three inch diameter circle between a quarter and half an inch thick. That looks pretty good. And then we're going to have the hardener. You want to open the bottle of hardener, squeeze the air out, and close the cap. And just mix it up. Just squeeze it, shake it a little bit. And you want to follow the directions on the bottle, but pretty much most of them are the same. And then just squeeze about that much hardener on, just a line across, it should be good. Now you bring it over to the vehicle that you're working on before you start mixing, because once you start mixing, um, it's going to harden up pretty quick. You don't have much time to work with it. So just try to mix it together so it's all one color. Trying not to get air bubbles in it. All right, so I'll just take a little bit and just spread it. You want to really push it in to the welds. And this is the base coat. This is going to go on the bare metal and it's going to give you strength and it's going to seal. And I'm going to do the same with the rest of it. I put up some plastic just to prevent some of the dust from getting into the car as I'm sanding. The dust gets everywhere, so make sure you put up some plastic. Okay, now you don't want to wait too long before you start sanding because if you wait too long, this stuff turns very hard and it's a lot harder to sand. So you got to check it. Um, I'm going to use some pretty coarse sandpaper, some 40 grit or 36 grit sandpaper. Um, and when you're sanding, use a sanding block. You're going to want to go in all directions, go up and down, back and forth, and then a lot of crossing. If you do X's, that helps out a lot. So if you started doing this and it seemed like it's still a little tacky, then you might have to wait a little bit longer, but this is perfect right now.
So this is coming out pretty good. Um, so I can switch to an 80 grit sandpaper to get some of these lines out. Um, it is important to use a sanding block when you're doing this. You don't wanna just take the sandpaper and use your hands because um, you're gonna get finger marks in it and it won't be as smooth. It'll take a lot longer. So now I'll switch to 80 grit, just do the same thing. So with this body filler with the fiberglass in it, I have the right shape that I need. Now I'm gonna use another type of body filler that's just gonna fill in any of the imperfections. I'm gonna do a real thin coat of this. The filler that's on there, there wasn't a lot of filler on there as it is. It was a pretty thin coat. And so I'm just gonna mix this up the same way. I probably mixed up a little too much here. Okay, that's mixed in pretty good. Spread it nice and thin. The thinner you spread it and the more even you spread it, the less you have to sand. As you're doing it, you'll notice that it starts getting, um, starts acting weird, then you know it's actually all done, it's too hard. So you're gonna have to mix up some more if you need more. And then when you're done, just take your squeegee and just push it like that and just let it harden right there. It's easier to peel this stuff off when it's hard. All right, so we let that sit about 10 minutes. Just follow the directions on the can. Now I'm gonna sand it with a lighter grit sandpaper. I'm going to 180. Like I said before, I already have the shape I need. Now I just wanna smooth it out. Now that came out pretty good. Now I'm going to use a DA sander with 220 grit sandpaper. Now this DA doesn't spin, it kind of orbits, so it's a little bit safer to use. And I'm just going to try to feather it in just so it smoothens out a little bit more. and smooth now and I cleaned this area up, wiped it down with a uh, sponge and some water, cleaned it up and any area where you're gonna paint or even use the primer you're gonna want to scuff up the paint. You can use a scuff pad and just try to scuff it up, just a non-abrasive scuff pad. Now when I mask off this area I don't want to put a, a line right there, a piece of tape because then you're gonna have a line that's gonna show. So what I'm gonna do is go up a little bit higher Put a piece of tape here, piece of tape here. And we can fold this over, just like that. Then I can put some plastic on the top. Then when you're spraying, just try to spray in the down direction. You don't want it spraying up there. You will get some overspray in that area, but at least there won't be a solid line. And now on the inside where there's an area where it doesn't matter that you have a solid line, you could just put a piece of paper and just tape it just like that. This is gonna be behind the door anyway, so it's not gonna matter. Now I'm gonna take some primer, just follow the directions on the can. Shake it up real well, make sure the temperature is correct, and give it a light coat. You might give it a couple coats depending on how thin it goes on. And just go past the mark. So start the can here, and then stop, and then start, just like that. 
You don't want drips. And again, like I said, I'm going downwards. Now when the primer's dry, this area where you sprayed the primer directly is pretty smooth. And if you go up to the top part where the paint particles are a little bit smaller, it's really rough in this area. So we're gonna have to address that. And then also if there's anywhere where you had a tape line, you're gonna feel that tape line. So we also wanna address that. What you could do is move your tape back a little bit now to fix both of these, I'm gonna take some 1500 grit wet sandpaper, and I like to use a sponge just to prevent using, uh, getting fingers, finger lines in it. And then just lightly smooth this out, just a little bit, until it feels smooth. It feels pretty smooth, that's good. And then with the paint line, you can do the same thing just so it fades out a little bit. This will just help disguise it a little. And just feel that line went away a little bit. So with your tape line right there, it's a good idea, even if you didn't want to sand that down a little bit, just to pull the tape up and just move it a little bit over and then that'll be all set. Then when you go to paint, it'll cover that tape line. And then if you had your masks up here, if you got some of the primer up here, you might want to move those up a little bit as well before you spray your color. Since we're only doing the rockers and a small section of the rear quarter panel, we're using color matching spray paint. It's going to be a lot cheaper and a little bit easier to use than mixed paint. Now after you spray the paint color, it's a little bit dull. You want to shine it up a little bit. So we're going to spray some clear coat. Pretty much the same exact method as spraying the color. So this came out pretty good. Everything's dry. It had a chance to sit over the weekend. And there's a couple areas that I messed up a little bit. I got a little bit of a drip there. I don't know if you can see it too well. That's okay, we're gonna try to fix that. And up here, it's not very smooth. That's from the little paint particles, so we're gonna fix that also. Um, let's take all the paper off. All right, before we go any further, we're gonna put everything else back together and put the doors on. Before we put the rear door on, we're gonna have to put this trim piece on. Well, the original way to secure this trim piece was these clips. Now, the new panel doesn't come with the holes that line up with the clips, so you either have to drill new holes. It's not gonna be that easy. So line this up and find where it goes. And you could drill two holes and then try to carve it out in the middle. It's gonna take a lot of time. So what we're gonna do instead is find the ones that aren't there. And we're just gonna cut these off. And you can do this if you want or if you can wanna spend the time, drill the holes. Cut those off. Same with this one. Just like that. Clean this up. And then you can put some double-sided tape on here and it'll secure just fine. And just line that up. 
those in and push that down. All right, so that turned out pretty good. So we have our new paint right here. We have our old paint up here. Right in the middle, it's nice and rough. And you can see a little bit of a line, but it's not a harsh line, which is good. So we're gonna take care of that. Now, one thing I didn't mention when we were putting this panel on was test fitting the door. Um, if you were trying to get it to look exactly perfect and get this to line up, you probably wanted to put the door on at that time before you welded it on, but we didn't do that and it came out pretty good. So first thing I wanna do is just wash this area up. Get some water. Should probably use some soap and water and just clean everything. We don't have a hose in here, so do the best you can. Now to get this roughness out, just gonna take some 1500 grit sandpaper, wet sandpaper and a sponge and just gently gently sand that away just constantly check it I got most of that texture out so just to make it a little smoother I'm going to switch to 2000 grit just do the same thing So this is that area where that drip was. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but there is a drip there. So what I'm gonna do is just take some thousand grit wet sandpaper with a sanding block and just gently try to, uh, try to sand that out. All right, so I got rid of the bump. So that looks pretty good. Um, Luckily, I put a lot of clear coats on. I put probably three or four coats of clear on, which gave me a little bit of room to be able to do that. If you only put one or two coats on, you probably wouldn't be able to do that. Now I'll go back with 2000 and just sand it down. So I masked off all the areas that I don't want to hit with the uh, buffer, with the buffer wheel and any of the trim. Uh, you don't want to get any of this compound on the trim, whether it's the chrome or even any of the black trim. Um, it leaves little marks and it's hard to get those marks out, so you're better off just covering it up. All right, I'm gonna start out with a medium cut, medium to heavy cut compound. You just put a couple dabs on there. And if you think of this as almost like a paste with sand in it, and the heavier the cut, the bigger the sand is going to be, the finer the cut, the smaller the sand's going to be. So let's put this on here and we're going to try to bring some of that shine back. Right now it's pretty dull because of us sanding it. So that brought the shine back, um, so that looks pretty good. You almost can't see that drip at all. I can see it a little bit just because I know where it is. Um, that's as far as I'm going to go as far as bringing the shine back on this vehicle. If I wanted to, I could use a higher cut and shine it up even more, but then I'd have to buff the entire vehicle. And for the age of this vehicle, that's as much as I need to do. Now I can just put a little bit of wax on it, that should be good. All right, now I'm going to take some wax, use an applicator, and just pretty much do what the instructions say to do on the wax itself. And this is going to protect it and make it shine a little bit more. All right, now I can take a microfiber cloth and wipe it off after it's set for a while.
So if you look at it real close, if you compare the paint, you really can't tell where the old paint is and the new paint. It blends together real good. Originally there was a step here or a running board and they were in really rough shape so we're not going to put those back on but if you had those on your vehicle you'd want to put those on at this point. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have make sure you subscribe to our channel, ring that bell, turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our videos. Thanks for watching. Visit 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts shipped to your door, the place for DIY auto repair. And if you enjoyed this video, please click the subscribe button.